But uh, here's another guy. And this is Pierre Pelivier. I think that's how you say it. Pierre Pelivier. He's Trudeau's main opposition. Unfortunately, the way things work here in Canada, the way everything's set up right now, I don't know how much of a chance he has, even though Trudeau is about 20% in the polls, I, I'm sure they'll figure out a way to install him for another term here. But here's the flip side of Canada. I mean, I don't love Pierre. I think that he eats at the same kind of tables as the the people who we very much dislike in the world. But at the same time, at least RFK, at least Pierre, at least these guys are talking about things in like a logical sense. They're They're at least putting the effort there and putting it out there. Trudeau is just a complete... I, Trudeau is like the female version of Kamala Harris. They have zero substance. They just say what they're supposed to. They they are the um, they are what politicians. That's what I've always thought of politicians as guys like Trudeau, Kamala Harris. But you have you have people like RFK and like Trump and like Pierre here who are actually trying to explain what's happening to people in in real terms. So I watched this video this morning. It's two minutes long, but uh. It's a pretty good video. Like I said, I don't think that Pierre, even if he was elected, I don't think he could change much here in Canada. But it just goes to show how different the two sides are in terms of just economic sense, I guess. Yes. What are the steps that need to be taken to fix the damages done to inflation? First and foremost, stop the overspending. Inflation, ta high taxes, deficits, High interest rates are all symptoms. The disease is overspending. When governments spend too much money, there's only three ways to get it. One is to raise your taxes. The other is to borrow, which means that they'll tax you more later on. And the third way is to print money. Now, printing money seems like a painless way uh, to, um, to pay for things, but it, it's very simple. If you have 10 apples and $10 in the economy, it's a bucket apple. If you double the number of dollars in the economy to 20, you still only have 10 apples. You're not twice as rich. It's just that each apple costs twice as much. And that is a tax on the working people because it chews up the purchasing power of your paycheck only to pay for government's excessive government spending. And it balloons the asset values of the billionaires. So it's a real transfer from the have nots to the have yachts. Inflation is the worst and most immoral tax. It always results from government creating cash. Our government has created about $700 billion of cash in the last three years. So we used to have $1.8 trillion of bills, coins, and banks, bank deposits. That was about three, four years ago. Now it's up to $2.5 2 so that's extra cash, but the economy has only grown by 4%. So the real things in the economy have only grown by 4%. The cash has grown by 40. So the money supply is growing 10 times faster than the stuff money buys, which creates a bidding war. And that's what's driving up inflation. We have to cap government spending with a dollar for dollar law that requires my ministers find $1 of savings for every new dollar of spending so that they go into their departments, find the waste and mismanagement they want to spend more here, they have to spend less there, or get a bargain here and there to bring both under budget. Then and only then will we stop the money printing, borrowing, and over taxation and wrestle inflation to the ground. Thank you. Much. That honestly, that, that kind of reminded me of what uh, the video we watched last week from uh, Ron Paul, honestly. Very, very much the same thing in, in terms of how bad inflation is. And he, he talked about, you know, cutting, spending, saving where we can. I mean, yeah, that'll that'll kind of get things somewhat under control. But we're at a point now where it, it's out of control. We're in, a, we're in a debt spiral. So, yes, it sounds nice to be able to say those things as a politician. It makes sense. People can, you know, do math with it. And, and I mean, it, that's a much better version of than what, the other side of it says they they say that they're creating jobs, that it's a healthy economy, that they're bringing in new workers, they're bringing in immigration. That's what they talk about. It, it makes no sense at all. This at least makes sense, but they don't. I don't know if he understands that they're past the point of no return now, in terms of government spending and debt that the Canadian government has accrued. So, 
two sides of the coin there here in Canada. I know that there's a, lar a large portion of our viewers from Canada, so I think it's very relevant. But at the same time, the only way forward is to actually have an asset like Bitcoin or even gold. Canada has no gold anymore. It's all gone. Sold it to China. Gold would be good. Bitcoin would be better. But that's the only way that we're ever going to pay off that debt. It's not by reducing spending in different departments. It'll help. But it's, we're never, we can't fix it now. It's, it's too far gone. Uh, what did I miss here? Uh, AD said they had that happened in Cyprus. They had a bail-in. Yeah, so bail-in is when the government, like ours, will probably be soon, where they're so far in debt and they cannot pay any of their liabilities that they have to take from their own citizens. Bail-in, take out of the banks. Whoever has savings, that's it's getting taken. Uh, Boomi says for emergency cash, and if you have some land, you can grow your own food. Yes, agreed. You just kind of have to take small steps towards that. It, you, it's not something that you can do in a week or in a year, but you just need to start positioning yourself to be ready for what's coming. And thankfully, you know, as much as we want things to accelerate and things to change, it's probably better that things aren't happening too fast because that would just be complete chaos. At least this way, we have a way to kind of prepare ourselves to figure out the best play forward. And it's, it's things like that. It's just having some cash on hand. It's having some Bitcoin, obviously some land, some food, a garden. Uh, what else we got here? Mikel says, uh, the government in Canada and the U.S. let its citizens pay taxes to uphold the illusion that people fund the government. The money printer works if we pay taxes or don't. Yeah, I mean the whole the whole system is just completely corrupt and criminal from head to head to toe. I, I like this one too. Ad it said from the, the have nots to the have yachts. That's exactly what's happening, and it's it it is a tax. When you have inflation, the people at the top they benefit. The people at the bottom get destroyed, and we're going through a hyper version of that right now. And you can see it. Just take a look around, wherever you are. If you're in the Western world here. As uh, JMF says, all Western countries are under attack, not just Canada. Agreed. And Michael Abbott says, excellent one-on-one -on -one from Pierre without a teleprompter. 100%. You look at, that's what I mean. Like, whether you believe him or not, whether you think his intentions are good or not, it's nice just to have somebody who's somewhat intelligent representing your country and representing your economy. I don't think that that's too much to ask. Just have somebody who can speak without a teleprompter and understand what's going on and maybe how we can fix it. I haven't heard one thing in the last, I don't know how long Trudeau has been running this country, to nine years. I haven't heard one thing that he said made any sense in nine years. He hasn't done one positive thing for Canadians. And it's the exact same thing in the States. Like Kamala Harris has been in government for the last 20 years. She's VP for the last three and a half years. She's made things a lot worse. And now all of a sudden think people think because she's of color and she's a woman that that's a good vote. It's nuts. It's nuts. Um, I see my path to fire in here. I can't see his messages though again. But I see that he's, uh, oh, there we go. Uh, my path far says my, my my wife wants a new car but i don't want to sell sats is that the same absolutely wait it out don't never sell the bitcoin keep 95 percent because you're never going to get it back for the same price that you paid for it if you have to take on debt honestly and it's it's not hard to figure out why the my that's my answer because you're paying what five six seven percent on debt every year bitcoin's been going up 70 80 100 percent year over year like it's it's not uh if you can if you can wait it out that's definitely the play you just don't want to get too far over leveraged yeah man you should see our our clown system we have here how's your prime minister for nine years no term limits it's it's absolutely insane it's so crazy but we're still pretty much under like british british law 
here. And actually, if, if you listen to, I don't know if everybody's listened to the last what Bitcoin did or not. It was Mahler's, Odell, and Harry uh, Sudik. And they had a couple guests come on. I think uh, Peter's son was on, but Madex was on there too. And he's a Canadian. He's a big time Bitcoin artist, Madex. And they were talking about Canada. And Peter said, like, the people in Canada are like, salt of the earth and it's true we're, we're too nice we're too friendly here in canada but great people so many abundant resources here we just have idiots we have a very abusive government very abusive relationship with our government and they were talking about the fact that canadians say sorry because we're just so used to being absolutely trampled on by our governments it's sad it really is but at the same time i think that if you're somebody who's aware of what's happening of the corruption of you know the corruption plus all the really bad things that stem from that whether it's the kids the immigrants all the all the things that stem from this if you're aware of the problems here and you're not doing anything about it that's a that's the biggest problem at least with trudeau you know what his intentions are but with people who are citizens of Canada and who know what's going on here and aren't willing to do anything to actually make change, you're the problem. And I'm not talking to anybody in this community because just the fact that you're showing up, the fact that you're choosing to put your time and energy in towards Bitcoin versus the old system, then you're part of that. And you don't need a YouTube channel. You don't need a Bitcoin business to represent that. You're already doing it. You're making change. You're voting with your currency that you're deciding to use. So I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the people out there who are still going to work, still keeping their money in the bank, still holding stocks in the companies who are trying to enslave us. That's the problem. And it's sad. <clears throat> nice people get taken advantage of. That's Canada itself. And it's exactly, we have a very abusive and unfriendly relationship with our government. It's been like that for a lot of years. And people here have each other's back. And as you know, Trudeau plays plays into that. The guy said, you're taxing me too much. And Trudeau said, well, you have free dental. He said, no, I, I don't. But some people do. Oh, yeah, my neighbor who doesn't work because she's too lazy. Yeah, well, Canadians have to stick up for each other. Perfect example. Canadians have to stick. So you go to work. You, you, you go to work. You stick up for each other. You go to work. She can stay at home. She's going to get all the benefits while you get stomped on. They, they very much hinder any growth here. They hinder productivity. It doesn't, nobody's motivated to do anything because the government just takes it all. They, they harm and hurt and punish the people who are actually trying to be productive to society here. So it's not sustainable. That's the thing. It's just, it's shitty because there's going to be a lot of years that we have to pay for it. But again, as much as I hate that man, absolutely despise that man, he has created a whole lot of really good Bitcoiners here in Canada. So governments are temporary. Dictatorships are temporary. But Bitcoin is not. Bitcoin is going to be here forever. And Trudeau himself and their insane government and policies have created a whole bunch of really good Bitcoiners here. And, and that's going to be what outlasts everything else. 